In today's video, we're going to talk about CEC or cation exchange capacity. Now, cation exchange capacity can be found on your soil test. Essentially, cation exchange capacity stands for the ability of the soil to hold positively charged ions or cations. Why we use this is as a measurement to see how much nutrients the soil can hold. The particular nutrients we look at are represented by your base saturation. That would be potassium, magnesium, calcium, hydrogen, sodium. These five elements are what make up your cation base in the soil. Now, your calcium and your magnesium are your alkaline earth metals. These are positive charged ion earth metals. Your potassium and your sodium are alkali earth metals. And then your hydrogen is going to be a other non-metal. Essentially in your soil, we can think of cation exchange capacity much like a glass. The larger the glass, the more your soil can hold. So with a cation exchange capacity, a cation exchange capacity of 10 is considered pretty common. Lower CECs tend to be more sandy soil, whereas higher CECs, such as this one here, tend to be more loamy or clay-based soils. The higher your CEC, the more nutrients, the more cations your soil can hold. Essentially, the larger your glass. Whereas your sandier soils, your lower CECs are going to be a smaller glass. Now, when it comes to cation exchange capacity, what we're looking at is the composition of these five nutrients. All combined, they make up 100% of your base saturation. Once again, when we're looking at these, we typically want calcium to be about 65 to 75%, magnesium to be about 15, potassium to be three to five, sodium to be 1% or less, and hydrogen to be 10% or less. Essentially what this means is in your soil, you're typically looking for about 90% of the soil to be filled with your calcium, magnesium, your potassium, and your hydrogen, or sorry, your sodium, with the remainder being your hydrogen. One way that we can visualize this is <clears throat> with this glass and filling it with water. So, a good healthy soil, about 90% full of these five elements, with the remaining space being composed of your hydrogen. Now, what happens is over time, your plant is going to use these nutrients. And as it does so, what happens is space is left in the ground. Now, that space must be filled with something. So, what happens? Your hydrogen occupies that space, it's readily available. It's in the water that goes to the ground, it's in the air we breathe. So, being that this space must be occupied by something, hydrogen takes that place. So when we look at pH, we're looking at percent hydrogen. The higher your percent hydrogen in the ground, the lower your pH is going to be, the more acidic your soil is going to be. What that essentially is telling us is that our potassium, our magnesium, or primarily our calcium is going to be low and in need of being replenished. So what we do is we come in typically with either dolomitic or calcitic lime or with a product such as ProCal or AdvanceCal to replenish these levels in the soil. Now, as we do that, you can only have 100% of base saturation in the soil. In other words, in order for something to be added, something else needs to be removed. So as we add more calcium back into the soil, bring our pH up back to a neutral state, what that means is that hydrogen is getting displaced, is getting moved out. Now, when we look at our periodic table, your calcium has a weight of about 40 atomic units, whereas your hydrogen only has a weight of about one, meaning it's very easy for your calcium to displace that hydrogen, pushing it out and getting that soil back to a neutral state, back to that 
mostly full glass that we look for. Same can be said for magnesium. Your magnesium weighs more than your hydrogen, so for low in magnesium or for low in potassium, as we fill those back up in the soil, that hydrogen is getting pushed out. Now, calcium is the heaviest of these, which means if we have too much magnesium in the ground, we can do the same thing with the calcium. We can raise our calcium levels, which will in turn lower the calcium to magnesium ratio, getting your soils back in good shape when we have too high of magnesium. Now, what sometimes can happen as well is we all desire a neutral soil pH, typically about 6, 8 to a 7. However, we still like to have some of this hydrogen in the ground. If we get too much of one of those nutrients in the ground, what ends up happening is we remove all the hydrogen out of the ground. As can be seen in this soil test here, calcium levels are very high. We typically shoot for about 65 to 75% on this soil. These levels are sitting about 85%. What that means is there is no space left for the hydrogen. Hydrogen is easy to bully. It's easy to move out of the way. And so when we over apply or when we already have too much in the soil of calcium or magnesium, the first thing to go is going to be your hydrogen. Now, this poses less of an issue for most of us, being that we're typically combating low soil levels. So once again, what do we have to do in order to get hydrogen back in the ground? The answer is you really don't need to do anything because over time, your plant's going to drink that back up. That hydrogen is going to come right back in, fill the place that's left in the void of that calcium or that magnesium, and so on the cycle continues. But the biggest takeaway is this. Your hydrogen will always be there to fill that void. That is why we use pH to determine the health of our soil. Really what we're looking at, instead of saying my glass is so much full, pH is saying my glass is so much empty. Whereas we can look nowadays with more advanced soil tests, we can actually look at base saturation and determine more than just the pH. We can say, oh, my glass is 13% full of magnesium, 85% full of calcium, half a percent full of sodium, and 1.1% full of potassium. And this allows us to say, okay, I need more potassium in the soil. I need more magnesium in the soil. I do not need any calcium in this ground in order to balance these levels back out. And that gives us a better in-depth understanding of how to manage our soil, how to manage our plants, and how to grow a better crop.